Hello all, this lecture is about Kirchhoff's voltage law and, volt and nature of voltage. So first, before we go into Kirchhoff's voltage law, we actually have to state what voltage is. So far, we know that voltage is the force that makes the current go, or if you will, electromotive force that causes current or whatever. But it's not just the only definition of voltage. Voltage is also energy. And it's not just energy, it's energy each charge has. So every single time you have a charge and it passes through the battery, the battery gives the charge a little bit of energy. And that energy is called voltage. So since energy is measured in joules, and you should remember that from your chemistry class. If you don't, I wrote it out over here. And voltage, the amount of energy each charge has, then the units of voltage would be something like energy per charge or joule per coulomb. That works out really well because we have a current flowing through our circuit that's in coulombs per second, also known as amps. And then we have voltage that goes in joules per coulomb. So, so now that we've got this, let's think back to our experiment that we did in class. We had a battery, that was me, and I was giving out paper clips, right? That paper clips was our voltage. Literally, I gave each charge passing me by exactly four paper clips so i give them exactly four volts and then they went around and gave each of the paper clips to each of the resistors i have on the diagram so let's label a few things so when my charges just left the battery they still had their four paper clips so from the time they left me and got to the first resistor, they had four paper clips in their hands. That means they had four volts. But then something happened when they saw the resistor. They had to give the resistor one paper clip. Now, that paper clip that they gave the resistor represents the volt that the charge would have to spend to get through that resistor. Think about it. Resistors resist the flow they resist the charges they don't want to let them through so charges have to spend energy to get through so they have to give one volt away now that particular voltage that they have to spend is called a voltage drop and the definition of a voltage drop is voltage drop across the resistor is the amount of voltage a charge has to spend getting through that resistor. So on a diagram, we would label our voltage drops as, as V, that stands for voltage, of that resistor, and this is R1. So this is one volt is literally V of R1. So <clears throat> now that they have spent one volt, at first they had four, they spent one, so now they had exactly three. So now they have three volts until they get to the second resistor. Now our resistor is exactly the same in this example. They're all going to get one volt only. So this one's going to get one volt. And this is, of course, V voltage drop of R2. Okay. So now that they gave the R2 exactly one volt, they had three. Now they have, they gave away one. Now they have two. There we go. So notice how every single time they pass through a resistor, the amount of voltage they had drops. That's why we call it a voltage drop because we know that they're going to drop the amount of voltage the charges have by exactly that amount. So now we got to V of R3. We're going to have exactly the same thing. 
It's going to take one volt. And that is V of R3. Okay. So now that we spent, now that we had two, we had two volts over here. And we spent one more. We now got to the point where we have just one volt left. So over here, we have just one volt. And once we get to our fourth resistor, and you know, I have them mixed up. This one is our four and this one. Let's see. Let me make this one. This one is R3, and this one is R4. And once we get to the fourth resistor, we spend our last volt. So we have one volt, and that's what V of R4 takes, the voltage drop of R4. And once we do that, we have no volts whatsoever. Well, that's actually really good. Because if we had those volts, that means the energy would go back into the battery and would try to heat up the battery and make it go pop. We don't want to do that. So let's get to the actual Kirchhoff's voltage law. What you really saw right now is the application of Kirchhoff's voltage law. And what it says that the voltage that the battery has gives the charges. It has to be spent around the circuit. In other words, all the voltage drops, V over 1, V over 2, V over 3, V over 4, they all have to adapt the voltage of the battery. Everything the battery gives the charges has to be spent. Because if it's not spent, bad things happen. You can think of it as a situation where your mom gives you 10 bucks every morning. But you have to spend it during that day. Because if you come home, she will take, take away the leftovers and give you another 10 bucks next day. So if you don't spend the 10 bucks, she'll just get, take it away and give it back to you next day. So... Let me write down mathematically what that means. So what we have is voltage of the battery equals the voltage of R1 plus voltage of R2, voltage drop of R2, plus voltage drop of R3. plus voltage drop of R4. And I'm going to type this up as well on the bottom. What exactly is Kirchhoff's Law? So Kirchhoff's Law... And, you know, usually people just say KVL. So you can definitely use the acronym. In fact, when you're going to do your um, practice test, I will ask you to use the acronym. So this is what Kirchhoff's Law states. Voltage of the, of the battery has to be equal to the sum of voltage drops. around the loop. Well, wait a just a second. I didn't tell you what a loop is. Well, the concept of a loop is very, very simple. It's the path that your current goes around. Over here, we have only one loop. The current comes out of the battery, goes through all of the resistors, and go back. That's all there is to it, just one loop. All right. That's all I wanted to say about Kirchhoff's voltage law. 
there will be another video on how to do problems with Kirchhoff's voltage law and find voltage drops.